In this uh, lesson on proving congruence, we're gonna, I'm just going to look at the one example of actually writing a proof. And in this proof, I want to, as you can see, I want to prove the two triangles are congruent. I'm given some information, and I have this picture. But again, just like every other time that I do a proof, I go back to the five steps of writing a good proof. Step one is to state the theorem or the conjecture that we're trying to prove. There is no theorem here. It doesn't say prove the midpoint theorem or some other theorem. It doesn't say prove that if something, something else is happening. So in this case, number one, I don't have to do. Now I go on to number two. List the given information. Well, nice thing is, given information's all right there, done and taken care of. Step three is to draw the picture and mark it up. Well, picture here, now I'm going to mark it up. I'm going to take that first statement, that segment RQ is parallel to segment TS, marked in my picture. And it also tells me that segment RQ is congruent to segment TS, marked in my picture. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to do some more marking on that, but I want to move on to step four of state what is to be proved, because I want to know in the back of my head, what am I actually trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that those two triangles are congruent. Now I'm going to go back to step three and mark this up a little bit more, because I want in my, in my picture to be able to look at it and go, oh yeah, these two triangles are congruent. Now one thing that I'm going to go to is this, the first piece. I marked that these two segments were parallel. I'm going to go back to what we learned um, in chapter three about parallel lines. And I'm going to highlight the parallel lines like this. And I'm going to put in a transversal, like so. Because sometimes it's a little bit easier to see what's going on if I do that. Now, if lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, I know that alternate interior angles are congruent. I know alternate exterior angles are congruent. I know corresponding angles are congruent. I also know that same side interior consecutive interior angles are supplementary, which is not as helpful in a problem like this. So I'm going to look for some of those things that are congruent because if I can get some congruent angles and congruent sides, my triangles are going to be congruent. Now, going back, I have my parallel lines. I see that I have a pair of alternate interior angles right here and here. Therefore, I know they're congruent. And they're also angles within the triangle. The triangle, I should say, plural. So that, this parallel line statement helped me come up with congruent angles in my triangle, which is going to be helpful. I look at my triangles now. I have, I have the set of sides that are congruent. I have a set of angles. I need one more piece of information. This piece is going to be kind of the nice one. Not a whole lot to do with it. It's just kind of staring at us and we don't see it yet. I look at segment RT and I notice that's in the triangle that's on the bottom and segment RT is in the segment that's on the top. So this segment right here is congruent to itself. It's congruent in uh, that segment is in both triangles, therefore, obviously, that piece is in both and is congruent in both. Now I look at this and I go, well, triangle on the left, I have side, angle, side. And then my triangle on the right, the triangle that's kind of on top, I have, well, there's that single tick, so side. The single arc, there's the angle, and there's the double tick, there's the side. So I have side, angle, side. It's going to tell me that these two triangles are congruent. I've proven it in my head, in the picture. Now it's to write the formal proof. And I'm going to go with the flow proof today. If you want to write the two-column proof, that's fine. You're going to do it the same way. You're going to have the same statements, the same reasons. You're just going to put it in two columns instead of kind of all over the place like I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my given information. Segment RQ parallel to segment TS. The reason is given. Again, two-column proof, people. You're just going to have that at, in two different columns instead of written like that. What I'm going to do is I'm not even going to go to the next piece of given information. I'm going to continue off this. Because of the parallel lines, remember, I knew that these two angles were congruent. I'm going to put that into my proof right now. Those angles are angle QRT. And we know it's congruent to angle, come up here, angle STR. Now I need my reason. How did I know they were congruent? Well, I knew they were congruent because of 
the parallel lines. So I'm going to say if lines are parallel, well then which angle pair was it? Those were the alternate interiors. So then the, and I'm going to abbreviate this, alternate interior angles are congruent. And there's my reason. So, so far, in my proof, all I've stated is that I have one set of congruent angles for my two triangles. I'm going to then go back to my other piece of given information that segment RQ is congruent to segment TS. And that was given. Now I have two pieces, one set of angles, one set of sides. And I need that other set of sides. Well, that other one would be segment RT is congruent to segment RT. Some of you are thinking, well, yeah, that's obvious. Something's congruent to itself. Right. But it's important to be able to put that into our proof. And I'll think back to all those properties that we learned about in chapter uh, 2. This is the reflexive property. And I don't need to connect that to anything because I didn't need to know anything else to know that the segment was congruent to itself. Well, now I have my side, my angle, and my side. And if I know that, I know the two triangles are congruent. My last statement's going to be triangle QRT is congruent to triangle STR. And my reason that I've said multiple times now, nothing more than side, angle, side. I just have to connect it to all the pieces that I needed. Well, I needed side, I needed the angles, and I needed that other set of sides. And there's my proof that proves those two triangles are congruent in a flow proof format. Again, you can write the two column proof, that's fine. Just realize all of these little things represent the reference numbers. And that's going to do it for my the one proof. We're going to look at more proofs um, as the days go on.